Well, hello there, tech enthusiasts. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Tech Talks with J Square. I am your host, Jenna Jones. If you are new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell, like this video, and leave me a comment after watching. So today I want to do a whiteboard session on storage area networks or SAN for short. So I want to first start off by defining what is a SAN. A SAN is simply a dedicated high-speed network that allows multiple servers to access shared storage resources. So what are these storage resources? They are generally disk arrays and disk arrays houses multiple hard drives and pulls these hard drives as a single pool of storage. What do I mean by dedicated? Dedicated means that this network is only used to facilitate communications and data transfer between servers and storage devices. Said differently, it is only used for storage processing. This allows this server to isolate the storage processing to its own little network and not have to contend with other network traffic. So what do I mean by specialized? Specialized means that SANS generally require specialized hardware and software. So it can be expensive technology, but it is well worth it for mission critical workload. So let's look at some common components that make up a SAN. We have servers, call that server A, running an operating system and an enterprise application. We have server two, B. We have server three, running an OS, running an app. So for simplicity's sake, we only have a few servers diagram, but in the real world, most organizations use multiple servers. And then these servers also have HBA adapter cards. And think about an HBA adapter card as a network interface card. These servers also need network interface cards to connect to the local area network through Ethernet. Same thing with SAN. They need a card to connect to the storage area network. So these HBA cards are generally dual ported. You always want two. You either want two cards or you want one card with two ports. And these servers are also running multi-pathing software. And I'm going to get to this in a second. Software. Okay. And then the second component that makes up a SAN are fiber channel switches. And fiber channel switches transfers fiber channel traffic on the SAN. And you always want to, for best practices, you know, they're not connected to each other. They're not even aware of each other, uh, but they're there for redundancy purposes, okay? And these fiber channel switches are very similar conceptually to Ethernet switches. Okay, Ethernet switches move Ethernet traffic. Fiber channel switches move fiber channel traffic. This is a small switch. And, and again, you know, this is not the switch that you go purchase at your local Best Buy. These switches have a lot of intelligence built into it, a lot of redundancy as well. And maybe I'll do a, a lecture in the future just focusing on the fiber channel switches. But right now, this is the second component, or you want to call it the third component. You have the servers, and then you have the uh, HBA adapter cards, and then you have the fiber channel switches. There is a fiber channel cable that goes from the HBA adapter card to switch one. And there's another cable that goes to switch two. This is the redundant paths, okay, um, that I'll get to in a second. Same thing for server B, same thing for server C, okay? And this multi-pathing software, it monitors all the redundant paths. So 
If a path goes down for whatever reason, uh, generally due to some type of hardware failure, either at the port level or the cable, um, and even the server. So, but the multi-pathing software manages and monitors these multiple paths. And if it sees a path goes down, it automatically fails over to the second path. And this should be a seamless event, shouldn't cause an outage, no data loss or no data unavailable. And then the third component that we have is the disk array. And the disk array is just a chassis that houses multiple physical hard drives and pulls all these hard drives as a single pool of storage. Okay. So of storage and this storage is available to all of these servers that we have connected to our storage area network. This is one of the many benefits. And this disk array has a lot of intelligence built into it. It has a lot of redundancy built into it. Can have um, traditional hard drives, slower spinning disks, or solid state drives for your mission critical workloads. These are high performance, uh, low latency disks. And it could also have a combination of both, you know, some um, HDDs and some SSDs in the same chassis. So also these disk arrays have dual controllers and the controllers handle the IO operations and data management. And it also has redundancy built into it. So this controller is also cabled up to the switch or switch is, you know, it has two connections um, going to each switch for redundancy purposes. This is a single pool of storage. And I want to just highlight some of the uh, benefits very quickly of this disk array. And this disk array has uh, redundant power supplies, redundant fans, redundant cooling, a lot of capabilities and intelligence built into it. And it's also running a software stack that gives it even more capabilities. So this um, disk array has redundancy, has data protection, you can do replication. You know, if you have um, two sites, you may have one disk array at site A and one disk array at site B, okay? And you can replicate and replicate is either real time or near real time copying of data from one site to the other site. And then you could do uh, snapshots. This is replication. And snapshots are point in time copies of previous system state. And snapshots are taken at regular intervals. So just think of it as a camera, you're taking a photo and it's taking a snapshot of the data every hour, every couple of hours. These snapshots are stored on the disk array and they're great for data recovery. You know, users can go back. If they deleted a file, they can go back and view their snapshots and recover their data. Snapshots can be used for immutable backups, for cyber resiliency, uh, fast recovery if the organization has a cyber attack, as long as this these snapshots are immutable, meaning they can't be changed or, or altered, or there's some type of logical air gap built into the technology of the disk array. I'll probably do a future le lecture just talking about cyber resilience and cybersecurity in the future. And then we have encryption, backups, so many great data protection features, storage optimization. We have deduplication or dedupe, and dedupe simply goes out there and gets rid of duplicate data to save on storage capacity because disk in this disk array can be very expensive. Again, it's not the disk that you go purchase from your local Best Buy. Uh, one disk can cost, you know, thousands of dollars. If you have compression, compression compresses the data, you know, generally two to one or three to one. So if you have 150 terabytes worth of data, you can compress that three to one and it's only taking up about 50 terabytes. Tiering is one of my favorites. 
So what tiering does, it makes sure the right data is on the right disk. Remember we talked about uh, HDDs are really good for infrequently accessed data. Data is not that's not used very much. You want that on slower disks and SSDs. You want your mission critical workloads on the expensive disk. Well, tiering can go out there and move and place your data on the right type of drive. So for example, you know, maybe there's data sitting out there on the disk array that has not been used in two years and is sitting on this expensive disk. Well, you know, tiering can move that data automatically from the uh, expensive SSDs and move that data on the slower disk because it's not accessed very frequently. So that's one of the beauties of uh, uh, tiering. And then I wanna talk about flexibility. A lot of flexibility here, you know, allocation, deallocated, and reallocate it. So again, you know, you have a shared pool of storage that's available to all these servers. You know, the storage admin can carve out a chunk. Let's think of this as a uh, hard drive, carve out a chunk, four terabytes, and it can take that chunk and mount this up to this server. And this server will see that as a local hard drive. This is a four terabyte drive. It's, um, the server doesn't know that that drive that's mounted is on an external storage array and it does not care. So the beauty of this, this four terabyte that I've given to um, server A, I can resize that. You know, the server admin can say, Jetta, I need eight terabytes now. So I can take this same four terabyte and uh, through tools, I can resize this four terabyte to eight terabytes. You know, I rescan, and now the server will see a new drive. It's not really new, it's the same drive, but they will see an expansion. So whereas before it was four terabytes, you rescan after the admin does their magic, and now you have an eight terabyte drive. So resizing, then you can allocate, of course, um, any, um, any size, volume or hard drive to any of the servers on your storage area network. And then you can deallocate it, deallocate. So let's say down the road, you know, the server admin say, Jetta, I no longer need that eight terabytes. We're decomming the server. So I can deallocate that storage and put that eight terabytes back in my pool of storage. And reallocate it back to any server on my SAN. So you can resize, allocate, deallocate, and reallocate storage out of this shared storage pool. So I hope you found this lecture very helpful. Drop in the comments. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if your organization is using Sands, let me know. I would love to hear from you, friends. So until next time, I will see you on the next video.